Hello and welcome back to Content Club where we discuss the hottest topics in European football. We are back in the East Dulwich Tavern and it's your favourite two presenters on Football Daily. It's Henry Hill and Michael McCubbin. Hey, welcome three, back boys. Three wow, presenters. you can't Come say on. that. Yeah, I couldn't say that myself. But guys, we've had the Champions League, the semi-finals are yes. decided. Man City versus Real Madrid and the Milan derby. Henry, your thoughts on the quarterfinals briefly. Yeah, I mean I I don't feel bad, but obviously got swept up in the whole Napoli story. Um, when actually you just look at their very like, last month of form, it's not too surprising mm. what's happened. Um, amazing from AC Milan. I actually think amazing from Inter Milan. I mean, I know they conceded too late on, but really they they didn't sit off Benfica, and that's what I enjoyed. They they, they kept going at them, scored some great goals. Di Marco, I think, what a great guy. Yeah. Uh, he's been he's been a revelation. I think we wrote about him in a ten last year when he was at Verona, saying he could do a job there, and he's just been fantastic. Uh, this season was it two years ago? I don't. Know. Maybe, I can't yeah, remember. Maybe two, yeah. um, I just want to say, like last week on this show, I, I I said some things about Feyenoord which are incorrect in terms of their striker, and uh, I didn't know Cockchu. I didn't realise that he was born and raised in the Netherlands. I just okay, wanted like yeah. thank. Do keep bring these things up when we get these wrong. So I think mm. it's important. But yeah, I, keep it straight. It's it's impossible. You know, we try our best to cover as much as possibly can, and sometimes there's a few things that are going to slip the net. So yes, thank you for pointing that stuff out, and we will. I will endeavour to be better with my uh, fact checking. Henry, these things. you don't so, need to put yourself down. You, you're a magnificent. Oh, it's, not, it's, it's it's just fair enough. You know, every now and then you get oh, things. Oh, for sure. We're definitely wrong. not infallible by any means. I don't think we pretend to be either. But we are enjoying the ride. McCubbs, did you enjoy yes. the ride of the Champions League quarterfinals? Um, no real lots of last minute drama. Yeah. It was a bit dull let's be honest um, probably the yeah. dullest Champions League quarter final round of fixtures I can remember um, but I thought the first the first leg of Man City versus Bayern Munich was was fantastic I thought actually that Napoli Milan second leg was fa actually oh, both, both those legs actually Milan, you know were, were pretty fascinating um, and you know the, yeah I, I think we, we, we spoke about it tons on Tuesday night didn't we but that that Milan defense has kind of Really, um, you know, it's, it's it's very much back. I think well, it's a very much a big, a big statement. I think over those two sure. legs to have kept Kavicha at, at bay, like they did. Um, just the you one know, goal conceded. Just the one goal conceded over two legs. Um, yeah, it's just great. And, and yeah, the you know the derby, uh, the Milan derby in, in the semi-finals is just is yeah, it's just great to see. Oh, it's um, going to be absolutely wait. epic. No, yeah. it should be absolutely. Also, huge. also that the the um, the the. What was I going to say? The atmosphere at uh, San Siro for the Benfica game was absolutely wild. Like, yeah. it's great. It's great to see, like, um, you know, the, the home support for for Inter. Like, in you know, I, I don't think I've seen an atmosphere like that at San Siro for for a long time. It was epic. It was epic. Yeah, and uh, I think it felt like the two favourites in many ways from either side of the draw, Bayern and Napoli, both going out. Well, at least they were potentially my favourite as well. At least when they're under Nagelsmann, Bayern I Munich looked so good in the Champions League. But did they cause a little bit of unnecessary disruption to their season by replacing him? You know, benefit of hindsight, you never really know. I think it was going really badly in the dressing room. They also weren't doing great in the league, so they made that call. But anyway, let's get into today's episode. We're going to be talking about the players fighting for their futures because there are, as we keep on saying, just a matter of weeks until the season finishes. I believe the Premier League fi uh, season finishes on the 28th of May. I think the I think that's all the leagues are around that period. And there are a few players under pressure who need to deliver to avoid being sold by their clubs or to impress on loan to earn another move, etc. So we're going to go through some mm. of the questions, some of the examples, sorry, that you guys responded to my tweet with and analyse them. We don't also have to agree with your suggestions as well. The first one, Henry, comes in mm -hmm. from jcalv underscore 13. And he said Divock Origi or Charles de Catalara. And how much did your face light up when you saw Divock Origi? I was like, let's <laughs> go to the top. Yeah. Here he goes. Uh, yeah, I mean, both players are having bad seasons. Let's have it right. Um, and you know what? I'll hold my hands up. I thought Origi was going to be much better at Milan than he was. I certainly thought he would get more minutes and opportunities. Mm. He's only played 945 league league and Champions League minutes this season with two goals and one assist. I think one of the goals was a banger, if I remember correctly. It was yeah. like a top corner strike. But yeah, 0.32 XG per 90. That is pretty average for a striker. If we bear in mind that Ibrahimovic hasn't featured, well, barely featured at all this season, I do just think Giroud is quite clearly the more trusted, superior in every aspect forwards. His, although he's older, his fitness just seems, he seems to be in perfect yeah. condition, doesn't he? And I think his influence on the pitch is far greater than Origi. And it's funny, actually, we were talking about AC Milan and the lack of experience in the Champions League. 
Origi's got two Champions League finals to his name, doesn't he? Mm. And a winning goal. So, I mean, maybe he's being useful sort of behind the scenes. But yeah, I, I, I still think, though, for a free transfer, it's not a massive disaster for him. Four-year deal. Ibrahimovic, I think they've said he's not going to extend his contract in Milan anymore. Ooh, I, th- I, 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 th- I, th- I was reading rumours that, 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 I mean, it's, it would make sense for them to part ways at this point in time. Certainly with the uh, sort of lack of action he's got this season. Origi, I, yeah, he, maybe he should have gone maybe a step down in terms of club to try and get some more minutes. I mean, Colt status at Anfield, but yeah, not an amazing goal scoring record there, even though it's quite hard to be sort of a consistent scorer when you're being thrown on. Scorer of big goals. A scorer of big goals indeed. When you're being thrown on for like 15, 20 minutes here and there, it's quite hard to really make a huge impact. But yeah, it's 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 interesting. I, I still think that next season, if Ibrahimovic goes, although I do think they should be looking to get another forward or sort of a wide mm. forward that can come inside, a Pulisic or something like that. Ooh. I still think that Origi has a role to play, certainly within the squad there. So I'm less worried about him. Di Ketelara, though, I do think that his time at a top club for at least one season will be over. I think for 32 million euros, mm. it's just... So you the, think they'll sell him this summer, do you? Mean I don't so? think they'll sell him. I think they'll at least entertain a loan move away maybe one year maybe two years yeah I think he, he desperately needs some confidence I wouldn't even be shocked if well I don't know I don't think they should sell him just yet but it has been miserable it has been totally miserable zero goals one assist he's missed some big chances you can see the frustration on his face I think there's clips of the players going like come on it will come it will, that mm. is, it will happen eventually I feel sorry for him just under 1,200 league and Champions League minutes I mean he's not really even featuring in the Champions League is he right. at this point are you going to be throwing on a guy devoid of confidence in sort of one of the biggest games in Milan in the last decade for Milan I don't, it's just not going to be happening is it so yeah he, it's, it's a shame for him Leeds were interested in the summer he went to Milan I don't think you can begrudge him for pushing for that move but I just I, the longer this sort of barren streak has gone on the more you can just see confidence breaking in him and it is a shame to see because I thought at Brugge he was fantastic I do just think he desperately needs a one two year loan move away just to build up some confidence um, grow into himself a bit more and then maybe come back and see what he can do at Milan this isn't a write off but yeah I'm more worried about his future at a top club than I am for Divock Origi because I think he can just be more of a presence off the bench than yeah, to get sure. in the near future I, I think the thing is with the Origi as well like they're not they're not really going to get realistically they're not going to get money for him are they even if they did want to sell whereas with De Ketelara he has had a bad season but I was thinking like his value will have depreciated but at the same time if there is a manager out there because he is clearly a top talent if there is a manager out there who is like, I, you know, I, I think I can turn this guy into a superstar, then, you know, on the contract that he's on, like it's it's not like totally unfeasible that a richer club than Milan could come along and be like, yeah, we'll we'll basically buy him off you for the same same uh, price that you paid for him. But equally, it, I'd I'd like to see him, you know, yeah, go rather rather than uh, yeah, I'd, r- I'd rather see him go on loan, um, just because like, it would be great to see him succeed, see a player like that succeed at Milan. I just I think of that what happened to Paqueta or something like that. I think like a loan move to a French side to mm-hmm. Lyon or something like that, yeah. where he can be a star man in a sort of slightly failing team, build up his confidence again, and then go back to Milan. I think that's what I'd like to see. Yeah, mm. and it was a shame because they really went for it. They didn't spend a lot of money last summer. He was their big sort of massive signing. It was only Messias and Malek Thiel that came in. Uh, and he just hasn't really managed to force his way into the side. And yeah, as you say, just a very much a bit part player in this Champions League run. And with Brahim Diaz leaving at the end of this year and speculation that Real Madrid want to offer him a new contract, either before selling him, I, I think probably oh, yeah. because if they're going to get Bellingham, he also doesn't fit really in a 4-3-3, um, at least not in a central, not in one of those midfield slots as well. So I think the idea was bring in De Catalara, he can take Brahim Diaz's pace next year, but it just doesn't look like he's ready at all. So I think but I mean, that's a bit uh, of a risk. yeah, I feel, I feel I feel like Diaz, at least in the form he's in at the moment, I feel like surely Milan will will try and make that move got, permanent, got won't they? But and and Real Madrid have actually they have sold a lot of top talents, but they t- generally sold them for quite good money as well. Mm-hmm. Like Hakimi, they managed to offload. I mean, Odegaard at the time now looks like an absolute bargain, but at the time they sold him, it wasn't looking like a ridiculously low fee by any means. So I think they'll mm-hmm. happily take 30, 40 million pounds for him. Uh, and and sell him to Milan. Nice. Right, McCubs, yeah. let's move on to Barcelona because there's a couple of good suggestions here from Mostafeli Razvan of Ansu yeah. Fati or Ferran Torres. Ooh. Ansu Fati is a particularly interesting one. Yeah, it's it's been a very weird season for Ansu Fati, hasn't it? And, uh, you know, like, to be honest, whenever I've seen him play, I've always thought he's been pretty good, but often that has been in the last 20 minutes of get- games, you know, in, you know, against hard defences, and he certainly offers 
you know, he offers that Barcelona attack something off the left that no one else can um, still, I think. When you look over the course of this season, um, it's clear that it's going to take him a long time to get back to that explosiveness that we saw from him in the past, or at least to fully regain the trust of Xavi, who seem, seemingly doesn't you know, trust him to start games week in, week out. I mean, he started 13, only started 13 games across uh, this season in the league and the Champions League. Um, he's made 21 appearances actually since the turn of the year, um, but 14 of those have been for 30 minutes of, or less. So he's clearly seen as an impact sub. He's only contributed four goals and three assists this season. A lot of those came against Real Sociedad right at the start of the campaign. Um, so, I mean, yeah, like I think his output is a bit of a problem. Um, but at the same time, this Barca attack has you know, I guess changed a bit to, to, you know, in order for Lewandowski to be that focal point. Um, you know, when it was Messi there, you know, that, that attack was a little bit, although it was still very much built around Messi and very over-reliant on Messi, there was, you know, I think the link up between those two players was a little bit more natural, I would say. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is slightly worrying that there are reports that his dad's encouraged him to leave the club yeah. in such a regular game time um, I mean I say worrying like I don't think that's it wouldn't necessarily be the, the worst shout for him at this point in his career like he needs to be playing every single week um, but apparently you know he says uh, sorry well, oh, what his dad said his dad that, said that he, he, to he, to he wants to go to Sevilla which would well, be a disaster his dad, I think. Wants, think, well, his his dad, dad said he often thinks of Sevilla yeah um, and I guess that's where he grew up that's wasn't it like so um, yeah, I think uh, that would be yeah, that would not be a great. I mean, he needs to go to a Champions League club. Um, you know, that, that, that's that's for sure. Um, the player I'm more worried about, to be honest, is Ferran Torres because he just hasn't made an impact since signing, and he was a massive signing, 50 million euros, yeah. which is you know one of the best pieces of businesses, in, uh, best piece of business in recent years. I think um, how Man City handled that, what paying like. 22, 23 million for him from Valencia, which was well below his market value, um, and then selling him at you know probably just above his market value to Barcelona. Proper bargain um, home job, wasn't it? Did you say proper bargain? Oh home yeah, home. very much, very much so. <laughs> cheap as chips, cheap as chips. But um, but yeah, like uh, he just hasn't made an impact at all, like not in an attacking sense. And um, yeah, that left hand side remains a bit of an issue. I mean, I don't think even Torres should have been ever playing on that left hand side, really. That was never where we saw him at his best for Valencia. That was never where we saw him at his best for Man City. It was always always either in the centre or on the right. Um, and um, you know, the Barca fans haven't taken to him at all. I think even when you know, Say even when we, even when we were um, you know fairly positive about him when he first came in last season, I think Barca fans. I don't think they've ever been convinced by him at all, um, apart from maybe in that first month where I think he played quite well in the um, in the Super Copper last year. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, they have invested heavily in that forward line in general. Of course, Rafinha was, you know, the the, the big kind of marquee signing of last summer. He's you know, impressed a lot more in the second half of the campaign. I mean, there's still question marks over Usman Dembele, mm. but I mean, without him and without Pedri in the side, you know, in the second half of the season, Not surprise, surprise, season. surprise, surprise, Barcelona haven't been great. Um, it, it feels like the same old story that, um, you know, those two players really do drive that attack. And, you know, even, yeah, Lewandowski's goals have dried up without those two in the side. So, um, so yeah, it's, the, the problem is with this, it's just like who, like no one's going to pay that kind of money for Ferran Torres in particular. And Sufati, I don't think. I don't think Barca can. I don't think Barca should sell Ansu Fati. You know, he's a La Masia boy, and yeah, like it's you know, it's a little bit. Wouldn't similar. be a great PR move. It wouldn't be a great PR. It's a bit like it's a bit like Chelsea with Mount this season. Yeah. It's like it doesn't matter if Mount's had a bad year. Like he's still he's still an amazing talent, and is the kind of you know he's you know he, he's you know that there's that there's that un, you know that's intangible thing in terms of like Represents a homegrown the soul player. Of the club, yeah, really. exactly. So um, yeah, very much so. So. Yeah, I don't think Fatty should be too worried about his Barcelona future. But having said that, maybe a low move would be good for Fatty. Um, but again, it kind of depends on what you know what Barca decide to do with their finances this summer. As for Ferran Torres, I think it's going to be very hard to get him out of the club. Mm, yeah, for sure, and they'll, they'll definitely be uh, posting a loss if they do as well. No mm. one's going to pay fifty million pounds for Ferran Torres, especially when there are so many better strikers really and I don't think that many teams are in need of a, a right winger this year except for maybe a club like Milan or potentially I don't see Ferran Torres going to Milan the interesting thing about Ansu Fati is that his dad's being very vocal about 
you know, maybe he should move on. But Ansu Fati, there's no noise that he himself mm. wants to leave. Jean V says he wants him to stay. George Mendes, his agent, wants him to stay. But this is Barcelona and they want to potentially bring back Lionel Messi this summer as well, uh, which is going to further muddy the waters in terms of their forward line. Personally, I don't think it's a great idea at all, really, as good as he's been this year for PSG when he's been available. Um, but Ansu Fati, you know, they could post a massive profit on him as a La Masia graduate, but I'm with my Cubs. I think it'd be a, such a bad PR move. And this was a guy that probably jumped up to the first team a little too early, more early Perhaps. than people expected. Yeah and instantly delivered in the first team, almost quite surprisingly so. Like he hadn't played a lot for Barcelona B, I believe. I think he went straight up from the under 16s or under 18s, mm. straight into the first team. And because he looked like such a natural at that level, he kind of just stayed there. He's had a little dip in performances. Xavi clearly doesn't think he's quite ready to be starting regularly. And there's also massive competition in that forward line when everyone's available. So I think it's just a combination of factors. But guys, let us know. Do you think Barcelona should sell Ansu Fati this summer? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Let's move on to Miguel Ciso 05 suggestion of Romelu Lukaku. Mm. Now, this is a really interesting one, I think, because it's a loan move that there are various reports of how much this loan move has cost into Milan. I believe I saw 20 million euros at some stage. I think it was 8 million euros in fees, 12 million euros in wages, but that seems like an exceptional amount in wages. Unless we're privy to their contract, we don't know how much Chelsea or Inter Milan are paying for his wages. But either way, it was a big, big commitment. And at the time of last summer, as bad as he was last year at Chelsea, and you know that interview, etc., falling out with Tuchel, the game where he had like eight touches against Crystal Palace, etc., it was just a mess. Bringing him back to Inter Milan made, made sense, really. Dzeko wasn't getting any younger. And Romelu Lukaku in his last year at Inter Milan, under Antonio Conte, was insanely good. I think it was about 33 league goal mm, contributions yeah. alone. He was super creative. He was bullying sides left, right, centre. He was Serie A MVP, I think. And he was just absolutely brilliant. But this year, he's really struggled. Seven goals in 24 games. Three goals and two assists in 18 league games. Just 12 starts. His form has been a little bit better recently. He's got two goals and one assist in his last five games. But his stats over the last 365 days are pretty average. So he's in the bottom 50% of strikers for non-penalty goals, pass completion, progressive carries, and successful take-ons. And you might think, progressive carries and successful take-ons, why, why is that Lukaku's thing? Often running into that right-hand channel was how he actually created a lot of his goals. He's been kind of misprofiled in his entire career as a point man or as a target man. But actually, he's best pulling wide, I think. Mm. And that's how Roberto Martinez used him really effectively for Belgium over the years as well. But he just hasn't been able to get any rhythm up. And there's been games where I've seen Inter Milan Twitter afterwards, and they're actively saying, you know, he's sort of playing against us in joke terms. <laughs> mm. Like, he has been that bad in some of the games. And two of his three league goals have been penalties. He's still operating at 0.79 expected goals and assists per 90, but that's where I just don't think you can take stats that seriously. Because the games I've seen him, he's missed some, a host of big chances. And yeah, his XG reflects that as well. He should be closer to seven league goals. He, he's just had some terrible, terrible games in there. And Gazetta claimed that Inter don't want to or can't afford to mm. sign him permanently. Mm. So there's the big question of where he goes next. He's going to be 30. Back to Chelsea. I, I, yeah, I think back to Chelsea. I mean, it obviously depends on what manager they get in and what style mm. of football they want to go down. But considering they are refusing to use Aubameyang, they don't really have anything like Lukaku in their squad and I don't think the club's in the current state where they can say to Lukaku you don't deserve an opportunity yeah. here because <clears throat> that whole squad is going to have such a shake up in the summer I actually think back at Chelsea he may oh. have opportunities do you remember that first game he played against Arsenal where he looked two goals. unbelievable but yeah I think for, in, yeah. for Inter's sake we never saw Pablo Mari again <laughs> yeah it's true uh, for Inter's sake you know they've got Dzeko I think they're looking to extend his contract which in the current situation isn't bad he's been yeah. brilliant this season Joaquin Correa we saw him get a goal off yeah. the bench yeah. uh, good finish yesterday I think he's Amazing a pretty reception decent reception as well so that yeah. yeah pretty decent option off the bench there so I think they'd be much happier going with those two and moving Lukaku on but yeah I, I do think there's a future for him at Chelsea if if they can just sort of yeah. hit the refresh I, th I think he's actually quite lucky Lukaku <laughs> in that like he, he pretty much severed ties with the Chelsea fan base last year but to be honest I think the Chelsea fans are so desperate now because their team literally cannot score to save their lives <laughs> that they'll just be like, they'll, they'll just welcome him back because it's like he clearly can still score and if, if, if say you know Nagelsmann is hard in the summer and um, decides that you know I, I'm sure Nagelsmann can get a tune out of Lukaku I have no doubt about that um, you know, he, he is still one of this generation's greatest ever goal scorers. Um, and yeah, used correctly, like you're saying, he can be absolutely lethal. Um, I guess I guess the, the worry is with him is that, yeah, like you say, he is he's not getting any younger and he has played like 
so much football in his career. You know, he's been playing top level football since he was 17. Um, so was and 17, 16, I think, yeah. yeah, like, well, I mean, he was playing for Andelect around that time. And then he was, you know, playing for, how old was he when he was playing, you know, when he had that season at West Brom on loan from Chelsea? 18, like, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, he's yeah. pretty, and, and was really prolific then. He was playing a lot of football. So, yeah, there will come a point in the next, you know, two to three years where, where we might see a really big drop off from him. Obviously, we have seen that in the last year or so. I feel like that might have, you know, has, has also has to do with kind of things away from the pitch and whatnot. I don't think, you know, he's been confident. I think, you know, all those kind of factors. But but yeah, that's something to think about. But I think, you know, next season, yeah, it feels like Chelsea is is, is the way to go. There's no way they're going to be able to sell him for any decent fee. Um, you know, they, they've, you know, they've already done enough damage in terms of their, their transfer business. Um, so like, yeah, I, th- I feel like this is, you know, th- they'll easily swallow that pill. And yeah, if he, can, if he sure. can deliver 10 to 15 goals for the next season, then that's a success. Yeah, and as we always say with Nagelsmann, he's got an amazing record of getting the best out of strikers. Sorry, we've got our weekly mm. ambulance going past as well, but going right <laughs> back to Hoffenheim, Kramerich, Belfordil, then at Leipzig, Timo Werner was amazing. Even last year, fighting with Lewandowski, he still got the second best goal scoring season out of him at Bayern Munich. So yeah. Good luck to Romelu Lukaku. I don't want it to end how it's looking like it could end because he's had back-to-back quite poor years and a poor World Cup as well. Right, let's move on to some of these other suggestions. Henry, who do you want to talk about next? There's some good ones. Well, you, you said off camera to have a think about any other players, maybe, and I was think Rui Patricio at Roma. Mm. I think he really needs to Big step penalty up. penalty save. Big penalty save the other day. It was a great penalty save, actually. However, I just think if Roma wants to go to the next level, and it looks like they could make Champions League football this year, yeah. Yeah. I do think they need a better keeper in there he's made way too many blunders for every good save that he's made they've got, they've got the young uh, ex-Benfica goalkeeper uh, waiting oh, in the wings yeah Sil- he Silva? Silva? Silva. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah he played against Man United absolutely yeah. so yeah I mean he's there if you look at sort of the quality of goalkeeping at the top end of the Serie A at the moment it is very very high mm. uh, uh, Onana um, Magnon even Szczesny so yeah I, I do think that Roma need to upgrade their goalkeeper department and Rui Patricio maybe it's his time at the top is done I've heard a lot of negatives about Carlos Soler at PSG a lot yeah. of people People really laying into him. Seen that in the Some comments. people were saying Verratti. Wow. wow. Yeah, I mean, I think he's had his best season, has he? I Some think people he were saying Brozovic. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, he's he's been a bit unfit this season. It's it's been tough. But I think I Chandler think... Oglu's like stepped into his position mm, yeah. quite well in his absence, hasn't he? Which I guess yeah. And very... they and they've got Aslana, who they do inter fans think yeah. has got a big future. Yeah, as well. the Empoli uh, signing. But if we go back to some of the suggestions, I think at Dara Dawson won Sadio Mane. Yeah, you know what? I mean. F- I can see it. I can really see it. I mean, he's, what, 31 years old, £260,000 per week. Uh, Florian Pessenberg saying they will try everything to move him on this summer after that, for, what, fight he's from the Sky dressing Germany room. He's quite reliable as well. Sky yeah. Germany guy, exactly. He's fight with, um, what, Leo Rosane yeah. in the aftermath mm. of the Manchester City first leg defeat. I mean, nine goals, five assists and 21, 29 league and Champions League games. It's okay. I think he started the season very well. It was every, it was quite positive by January, um, but yeah, I think certainly if the if the re, the news is that uh, they're going to try and go in for a more of a Lewandowski yeah, centre forward, be it Ossiemen etc., then I don't think that Mane would necessarily. Well, I mean, he would fit in. Let's not let's not have it right. He was part of one of the best front threes and um, that we'll we'll ever see. But. Yeah, if, if he's not gelling with the squads, if they're determined to stick... Because, oh, I mean, Sane, I think, hasn't had the best of best of few, few seasons um, for Bayern Munich on a consistent level. If they're going to stick with the wide men that they've already got and try and upgrade sort of the central point of the attack, then maybe Mane might be one to move on. Apparently, what, Thomas Tuchel doesn't think that he's a good fit for his system, which is interesting if he's arrived at that conclusion after only, what, two weeks. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of teams would, bat, would, would bite at, at Sadio Mane. I don't think they would sell him... For loads, I don't think his wages are crazy for someone of his for his standards. So, I mean, I was reading that PSG are looking seriously at Harry Kane, uh, but also someone like Sadio Mane would also do a job in that four three if they mm. lose Lionel Messi. So yeah, I think they'd be able to sell him, but it's just it's not so much he's fighting for his future because I think his future is fine. It's more more so at Bayern Munich where it clearly hasn't quite worked as well as well as we've first four and he's not getting any younger either. That's that's the thing. I just don't know how like which club is going to offer. I, I feel like this. This this Bayern Munich move was kind of his last big contract. So like wherever he goes next, he Absolutely may need to take cut. a pay, pay cut or at least like only sign you know a two two year deal, three year deal max. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's a weird one with Mane because I feel like the the kind of narrative about Liverpool making a mistake selling him is, I think, is kind of rubbish. I think I think they did well to sell him at that time, considering the the other investment they made in the attack. But I think clearly 
probably a bit of a mistake on Mane's part. Um, you know, I think you know they would have happily kept him if if he'd wanted to stay, um, or at least if he you know if he'd been willing to you know accept whatever terms on on, on his contract that they they were offering. But um, but yeah, it's a weird one. It is. It's such a like. I really did not see this happening when Mane signed for Bayern last year. It has um, been one of the shocks it, like, of the season, yeah. for sure. And I mean, with Kingsley Coleman having an amazing year, and Sane and Nabry are better long-term bets for for production over the next two three years. Then yeah, Mane's definitely in the firing line at Bayern Munich. I also read a report that Tuchel's not been very impressed with Leon Goretzka, mm. um, and apparently doesn't have much belief that Goretzka and Kimmich are the long-term oh, yeah, future, I saw that as well. which is kind of crazy. But you know, I'm just don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> uh, Macabs, we've got yes. Callum Hudson Adoy down here. Yes. You're quite keen to talk about him. This yeah, came in from Felix Johnston. Again, again, another move that I thought was great at the start of the season and has been a disaster. I mean, I say that Mane. I don't think Mane's actually been that big a disaster at, at Bayern. I think mm. the, you know, the behind the scenes stuff. If that, you know, if if you know that the stuff with Sane is is, you know, is a symptom of a problem of of him at the, a wider problem of him at the club uh, then maybe but um but anyway I digress Callum Hudson the door yeah I thought this was great you know joining up with a you know a really fun exciting side, yeah. fun Leverkusen side full of young talents who have been kind of maximized by various managers um you know and and was needed in many ways Florian Wirtz was obviously out until out until the world cup um and uh, yeah, he you know had had the likes of Diaby and Schick and um, and yeah Frimpong to, to play alongside and um, yeah it just it just hasn't worked out at all has it I mean it's not even be, been an injury issue um, I think he's only missed two games through fitness the rest has kind of just been Jabby Alonso not really fancying him um, he's only played two minutes of the Europa League campaign and we'll know whether they're through to the semis by the time you're watching this but it you know, has nevertheless been a really you know impressive campaign from them i think if they get into the semis it will be their first european semi-final since 2002 yeah or 2002, whenever sorry, it was yeah, when they yeah. got to the champions league final that was 2002, um yeah. so uh so yeah and i mean he still remains a very talented player like i mean he ranks in the top 15 percent of midfielders slash wingers according to fb ref for pass completion progressive carries successful take-ons like his dribbling ability has always been pretty elite um, it's just what, at the end, yeah, it's just what, yeah. His, his end product has, has has been lacking at points. Yeah, it's just he's just. I guess he's just not been the most well-rounded player in some ways. Um, and given how highly rated he was as a teenager, the fact that you know multiple managers at this point haven't played him. You know, even like Frank Lampard didn't really give him that many opportunities at Chelsea in the end then you know Tuchel didn't you know didn't play him much I mean played him as a right wing back for a lot of the time and now Xabi Alonso who has done a superb job at Leverkusen and could be you know one of the superstar managers of the future doesn't fancy him like it is worrying like it is really worrying because I don't see a, I, I, regardless I don't see a future for him at Chelsea um, mm. again unless you know Nagelsmann happens to, to really want him um, and he hasn't he just hasn't like there there aren't the numbers there to be like this is a player that a club should spend even you know million, 30 15. i mean i think yeah. 10 i think 10 15 million is fine but like you know this is a player who who Bayern Munich wanted for like 40 million euros uh That's you know true. a few a few a few years ago and Chelsea rejected that you know he was in high demand now i don't yeah now i don't think a club like a top club would 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 pay that kind of money or even like 30 million for him it's slightly unfortunate that he's joined Leverkusen's side where jeremy fringpong has emerged as such an attacking threat from right the right wing because then you're looking at if that's where hudson odoi wants to mm. play they're not going to have those both sort of bombing up that right wing, are they? Like, well, no, yeah. I mean, well, I guess I mean Musa Diaby. Musa Diaby's there as well, but yeah, I, th I think he's you know he's he's often played his best football on the left, to be honest. So, I think I think if you're, I think if you're good enough in that side, yeah. you, you can play anywhere. Like he was playing in the centre when he first started at Leverkusen, and then obviously, Vitz is you know just a cut above um, yeah, yeah. in terms of playing that more versatile position. So uh, yeah, I, I think if he was if 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 he'd shown enough. Then, then he would be starting for this Leverkusen yeah. side because there there are opportunities there. I know Klozek is also, you know, can also play on the left as well. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's it's yeah, it's been it'll really be, disappointing. It'll be interesting to see what happens to the Schick this summer too because he's obviously had a bit of a really big down year after a few great years at Bayer Leverkusen. Mm. It'll be interesting to see if they stick with him or move him on. So his his future is looking slightly shifty too. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Hudson Odoi is a weird one. I I wonder whether he could make a move to like 
Portugal or, or Holland or something and go, I mean, mm. I was about to say go out the limelight, but no one's been talking about Hudson Odoi this no. year. It's not like there's been loads of focus on him. He's just not got in that side and it's just been hugely disappointing. Right, let's move on to Neymar. Jay Dennis, 1995, <laughs> suggested this. Feels like this comes up yes, every uh, year. Yeah. Every year, oh, is Neymar going to leave? You know, he's injured to the end of the season. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows what you get with Neymar. When he is fit, I think he is one of the best five players in the world. He's definitely one of the most entertaining players to watch in the world when he's fit. But he is injury prone. He's missed the last 14, 15 games with injury. Another injury with his ankles as well. Uh, and there is just a bit of a mess going on at PSG at the moment. Apparently, Luis Campos has flown to Qatar to discuss with the Qatari ownership about Christophe Galtier's future. Mm. He's now being investigated for racist and Islamophobic comments he made during his time at Nice. The Guardian reported that Sir Dave Brailsford, who used to be head of Team Sky, the cycling team, who was Nice's sporting director, is being... Uh, questioned, as in, in, not as part of the investigation, he's giving evidence against Christophe Galtier, I should clarify that. Uh, but Neymar, when he's been fit this year, 15 goals, 13 assists in 26 league and Champions League games. Like before the World Cup, he was playing some of the best football of his career, I thought. Mm. Uh, at least since that Barcelona heyday. Uh, then had a poor-ish World Cup and, and has just had so many injury issues since. Will they get rid of him and Messi? It's impossible to say. It's impossible to say. Who knows who's going to be manager? Who knows what's going to be going on with that entire club right now? Um, so I wouldn't want to put my neck out on the line and be like, where would he go? Because he's also on huge wages. I yeah. think he's on around 30 million euros per year. Who's going to pay that right now? I can't see anyone. He just doesn't want to leave, does he? No. Like, like, uh, that's, that's the thing. There's, that, given how many times Neymar in the last few years has said, I'm perfectly happy staying in Paris. I, love, I, you know, I really enjoy it here. Um, and obviously gets paid a ridiculous amount of money. Like, it is mad how much speculation there is about him leaving. Like, yeah. I think he'll just run down his contract. He'll leave in two years and, you know. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, job done. Job done <laughs> for him. Uh, and also, I think his uh, partner or whoever he's with is now pregnant as well. Probably doesn't want to disrupt that. It's not yeah. the perfect time for Neymar to now move. Henry, before we move on to big match predictions, quickly on Jair Cancelo. Kelly's call cool, said Jair Cancelo. Doesn't look like... Uh, Bayern are going to pay that 70 million euro option to buy. No, but he's fine. He's still one of the elite right backs. That doesn't. Do you think City will sell him? Um, I, I I think they will. I mean, they're quite good at if they don't want someone in their squad, they're quite reasonable yeah. in terms of just moving them on. <laughs> Not even for that big a fee. I, it's just the problem is who's good. Yeah, he's exactly. A great pickup this summer though. No one's going to pay 70 million though. They, they're going to have to come down on that price. Yeah, yeah. They'll have to. They'll, someone 40, will, 50. Yeah. If if someone if someone definitely. waves 40 or 50, I don't know who. But if someone waves that kind of money. If Juventus have a bit of a windfall and they need to sort of rejuvenate that, though. maybe could he go back there? Yeah, it's Real yeah. Madrid. Real Madrid Ooh. left back. Real Madrid. Very. has been playing like a bit of an inverted left back role. Well. That would be or, it. yeah, like yeah. That'd be re- that's a hot move. I like that idea. He's um, so talented. Like the fact yeah. he can play on both sides yeah, so well. He can play in a sort of midfield role as well. He's in, insane. The bottom line is he's not fighting for his future. It's slightly up in the air where he goes next but he's still going to be fine fair he's definitely got a job next year for sure (laughs) Uh, guys let us know your thoughts about those players that are fighting for their futures are they fighting for their futures and the ones that we think are moving where do you think they should go let's move on to big match predictions so big match predictions last weekend was all about one man (laughs) it was all about Henry Hill Senor Hill so Schalke versus Hertha Berlin Henry went 1-0 to Schalke. His only mistake of the weekend. Um, the Cubs went 1-1. I went 2-1 Schalke. It was 5-2. Well done to Schalke. Mm. So that's one point to myself and Henry. PSG versus Lons. The Cubs went 2-1. I went 1-1. Henry went 3-1, which was a perfect score. So one point to the Cubs. Three to Henry. Severe versus Valencia. I went 3-1 Severe. The Cubs went 2-1 Valencia. Henry went 2-0 Severe. It was 2-0 Severe. So that's another perfect score. Wow. Plus one point to me. So Henry, I think that's the best we've ever had, Henry. So you got seven points in a yeah, week. That's really, biggest. really impressive. Another, one day another, we dream of a nine out of nine. Yeah, another seven point week and you're, you are on Doogie's tail. Yeah, yeah so. I'm a little bit worried actually. Yeah. Uh, now looking at that. So I'm on 56, Henry's on 46, McCubbs is on 39. Uh, so yes, it is getting a little bit tight at the top. Everyone's it's, nervous. It's not. <laughs> Everyone's nervous. Uh, right, the first game we are talking about is Borussia Dortmund versus Eintracht Frankfurt. Saturday, 5.30pm, second versus oh. seven. 15 points between them. Henry, Dortmund, they did it again. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, another week where Do- Munich dropped points. Dortmund managed to fluff their lines again. Uh, yeah, that, oh. that final goal they conceded at Stuttgart so to a fighting relegation. They've gone 3-2 up on the 92nd minute. They just need to hold out for four minutes cross into the box I don't know which centre half it was yeah, Flat Koulibaly Koulibaly yeah. flaps his flaps his foot was it 
That's harsh. Yeah. Flaps his fist. Well, why is he being thrown into that situation then? Because they, they don't have any. They don't have anyone else. I think he's going to start this game. Really? But, like they don't have anyone. Else. Throws his fist at it, and then Stuttgart store. It's just comical how much their season has imploded, and now they're up against Frankfurt. Who I. I mean, they haven't won in seven games, but I'd almost back them to get a result here. Mm. Um, I think I think this will be a draw again. I'm going to go for a simple one-one, just because Frankfurt are in great form. But I, I just think Dortmund. They must. I mean, what must that dressing room be saying to each other oh, right yeah. now? It's just, you know, you know when you, someone tells you, uh, it's not a joke anymore. They are just fragile. They don't have mm. the the metal to get over the line in these big competitions. What what's happened to them this year is embarrassing. In the space of a few weeks, I totally agree. I totally agree. They were on flying form at the start of this year. What did they go? 10 wins out of 10? But so, so embarrassing. Just not good enough at all. And they've got a difficult run in, as McCubb said a few weeks ago on Continental Club Extra. After Frankfurt, they still have to play Wolfsburg, Gladbach, Mainz as well, who are doing great mm. things under Bo Svensson. Bo Svensson, sorry. And this game, as McCubb says, they don't have Sula, Hummels, Schlotterbeck or Mounier available. Uh, they played Chan and Hummels at centre-back last weekend. Hummels then went off, which is why Koulibaly went on and that mistake happened. To be fair, it wasn't just him. There was mistakes in the yeah. build-up as well, but it was a shocking goal to concede. Yeah. McCubbs, Frankfurt, as Henry says, haven't been great, but been are great. you with him? Are they getting something out of this game? Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be a really high-scoring game. I do. I, I think you guys are being a bit harsh on Dortmund. Like At the start of the season, if you'd said to Dortmund fan that they were going to still be two points off top spot with what, six games to go? With Bayern having played as badly as they yeah, have at yeah, it's, it's not so much It's not yeah. so much that Dortmund have been great, it's because Bayern have been bad. But, and they've had but, an opportunity to actually try and take this they, 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 they have had a They have had an opportunity, but they but, you, but they made that opportunity for themselves by winning 10 games in a row, which I, I can't remember a Dortmund side that has, has done that in, in years. So like I think it's a, it's a bit of both. Like Bayern have been, Bayern were pretty bad last year as well. Bayern, like, I don't think Bayern were any, have been any worse this year than they were last year, really. Um, aside from, you know, I think their, their their form after the World Cup was, you know, particularly bad. But you know, up until that, had been pretty good. So I don't know. Like I think, I think you know, to to be this close to the title um, with this many games to go, um, I don't think is actually that bad. Um, given that there are t- like there are a ton of other decent teams in the, in the league. But I digress. Uh, Frankfurt um, probably should have beaten Munch and Gladbach on the weekend. To be honest, Moani could have had. Uh, a hat trick um, only got all, the one goal in the end um, but they are also quite um, depleted they're also um, quite susceptible on the on the break um, the, the goal they conceded was was, was awful that, that high line was just completely exploited by Turam and Jonas Hoffman um, and Dortmund to be, you know despite their defensive frailties I think they will probably concede two goals in this game at least their attack has been pretty good. Like Daniel Malin, like was brilliant in that He's first been great half. Recently, um, yeah. Like he just looks like phys- physically, he looks just so confident now. Um, so I think they can do some damage to that Frankfurt back line. So I'm going to go for a. Three, two to Dortmund. Wow, so, he's going yeah. for the extra points. He's got to do it. He's got to roll the dice. I, I accept your point about Dortmund, but it's still been an overall positive season. It just felt like having been so close. Of course, it's a with, huge opportunity. Uh, it's a huge it's... opportunity, and they don't come around all that often. I admit, in the last few years, they have got a little bit closer, but it's potentially their last year of having Jude Bellingham. They have sold another, potentially are selling another elite talent after the departures of Sancho and Holland. And no matter what you say about Sancho at Man United, he was insanely good at Dortmund. So. Yeah, it just feels like this is such a big opportunity and I'm just, it's a shame because respect to Bayern Munich, but that league does, it could do with a new winner, I think. And it's just been a bit of a shame. In this game, I think Dortmund get over the line though. I actually think this is going to be quite straightforward. I think this is going to be 2-0. Right, let's move on to Barcelona versus Atletico Madrid. Sunday, 3.15 p.m. First versus third. There are 13 points between them. McCubs, Barcelona, the league is done pretty much, but it's, it's a bit... Their attack Meh. has been a bit weird, hasn't it? It has been, yeah. I mean, we were speaking about it before, weren't we? Just they're, they're, they're just blunted without without the kind of creativity of Pedri in particular and Dembele's kind of incisiveness. Um, yeah, I, I can't. I'm, 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 I don't want to like get too much into this. I'm just going to say one all. One all, yeah. fair enough. Very boring Henry, game. I mean, Atleti is. have been in good form. No, I, I think this is Atleti's game for the taking. They haven't lost to Barcelona recently. Um, from what I can remember, like it's never like they're never blitzed by them, and yeah. actually they're probably the form team in Europe. I'm beating 13 league games, 10 wins in that time. They're scoring goals for fun. They've been hitting sort of huge numbers. Griezmann's back playing some of the best football you'll see. I mean, he was, he was incredible what last weekend's uh, too. I think you know they're actually closing in on a second place. 
I'm going to I'm going to give them a win here. I think that they're mm. going to do something. If Bar- Barca aren't scoring and Atletico aren't a team that really concede, I will go for a two 0 victory to Atletico. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. I mean, there are some big injury absences in this game. So Barcelona are missing Frankie De Jong, Christensen, Pedri, Dembele, as we already have said. They are on track for 95 points at the moment, which would be their best season since 2012-13 under Tito Villanova, mm. which is really impressive. But they would need to they need to get this over the line because it has it has been a pretty tough watch really in recent weeks uh, Atleti as Henry says probably aside from Man City the, the form side in Europe I would say uh, and they've been yeah they've been really good recently they do have Lorente and Condogbia suspended which is a lot of legs and defensive solidity yes. in midfield which are big absences <sighs> Depay is out as well Depay is out as well I'm going to go why not why not Two. did you say 2-1 two Atleti 2-0 two no. I'll go 2-1 yeah, to sensible, Atleti. That sensible. would be a turn, would be a turn up for the, whatever. I've said it now. Okay, let's move on to Juventus versus Napoli. Sunday, 7.45 p.m. 7th versus 1st. 31 points between them. Henry, what sort of mood do you think Napoli are going to be in right now? Is it just, just get this title over the line? Yes, it's an odd one. It would be, it's almost impossible for them to blow the league at this point in time. I don't think they were terrible against Milan. They just, no. it wasn't as if they were melting down they just came up against a really solid mm. uh, Milan side over the two legs that just just out them I don't know they had their number didn't they yeah. they yeah. just had their number over yeah. three, oh, three games they, I, just beat they just need to move on from Milan yeah. and get back to business I don't think this is the game for it though no. I don't because Juventus are in excellent form um, I, I know they lost to Inter in that Coppa Italia and they do have the semi-final that's li- um, the next leg of yeah, that they've lost their last two in the league as well to be fair what Juventus yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but it depends. But to but be fair, like, that, but it great. depends. I mean, it, it kind of depends. Yeah, it kind of. I feel like if, if Juve were to win, obviously you'll know this by now. But if Juve are through to the semis of the Europa, then they will be on a high still. Yeah, and also we, 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 don't, we, we still don't know as this is being recorded whether their points reduction is getting. Yeah, because if, 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 so. if that does get rescinded, then the, this is a huge game. This could be Juventus. seriously good vibes in yeah. Turin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh ooh, uh, hmm, I don't know what I'm gonna go for it's here. It's really tough to call um, I am going to say Do I do my old Desmond two two? Um, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go for two Oh Yes, two all. all. Fair two enough. All. That okay. famous scoreline that almost never comes in. Fair yeah. enough, I, I appreciate it though. Yeah, Juve, it could be a massive high um if they get through that tie. And yes, the, the points at the moment, the news is we've got, it, it looks like it's going to be suspended temporarily, potentially permanently, but temporarily, which might mean that they qualify for the Champions League this year. Bad news for the Milan clubs. Really yeah. bad news for the Milan clubs. Puts even more go, pressure go, go, go and win it then. on that semi-final. It's absolutely mental. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate Henry's point. Prior to their last two games in the league, they were in an excellent form. But last weekend against the Soilo, they barely created anything. Vlavic has completely dried up. Uh, he might go well and score a hat-trick last night, but yeah, it doesn't look great at the moment. I'm going to go... I'm actually going to go Napoli going getting over the line here. I think they'll be fully motivated. I'm going 2-1 to Napoli. Um, I'll go... I think I'm going to go for a draw, actually. 1-1? Yeah. One, one. yeah, I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. Yeah. No one too upset with that one. Guys, get your score predictions for those three games in the comments down below. And we hope you have enjoyed Continental Club for this week. I'm sorry we couldn't have time to do quick fire questions. They've got a meeting going on in here, so we need to skedaddle. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Eurofootball Daily. Look forward to Stat Wars the final tomorrow between myself and my Cubs. It's a big one. It's a juicy one. Enjoy that, and we'll catch you next week. Bye-bye.